Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Here we are. <laughs> Val and Roy, we're here to talk to you today about the photo fusing paper. So we've had lots of questions. We get lots of questions about this. I know that um, at, here at Delphi, sometimes we teach a class just on this, and I know Val um, talks about it in the fusing mm -hmm. classes that she um, teaches, too. So we thought we would uh, tell you guys a little bit about it. Show you a little bit of examples. Yeah, um, show you some examples, how it's done. what to do and, and what not to do, because we always we, have lots of those know. of oh, what not to do. That's right. I was going to grab that one piece that I have next door. I'll do it while you're talking sometimes. So. <laughs> okay. okay. On great. the not what to do, oh, right? I, I forgot know. the, okay, yeah. the uh, not what to do yeah, example. We can, so. we can grab it real quick. Yeah, and, yeah we'll get okay. it. So anyways, um, and as always, if you have any kind of questions, so, you know, while we're talking, you know, you can make a comment in the video section below, or you can always send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And the last one would be, you know, email us at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. So, but it's always funny. I don't know why. Why? It's, uh, I don't you would know. think I'd have it like totally memorized right, or something by right. now, wouldn't you? But I do not. So, so what are you going to do? So, show the yeah, paper first? Yeah, let's show the paper first. Right. So, this is the uh, uh, Delphi sells this um, photo fusing paper. Wow, I'm saying it backwards. It's fusing photo paper. I did not know that. Well, kind of means the same thing, doesn't it? I don't know. Anyways, Delphi sells this package, and it comes with ten sheets, and uh, for like, well, the current price is like twenty dollars, which so that makes it two dollars a sheet. And I can tell you that, it, I mean, it's been that price like forever, right? It so has I mean, been, it's yeah. a great price, really, uh, for what you're trying to do. So. This is what they kind of look like. So um, one reason why I wanted to pull it out is every sheet has this wax paper on the on the front of it, and sometimes the wax paper is sticking pretty good to the to the paper, and then you might not think that there's a wax paper laying there. But I, I've had people before that right. print on the wax part, which is this part, and then it runs into all kinds of problems. Usually that doesn't turn out very well, burns up uh, in the yeah. kiln too much. So so remember, there's always a protective um, paper. And then you can see, too, if you're not sure, it, the actual paper, it's like any photo paper, right? It's very shiny. Yeah, it's really so shiny, right? You'd so be able to tell. The, the back side is, you know, looks like paper, right? And this side's kind of shiny, so you really know. So then you see the wax paper is not as shiny as that surface. Um, I always hold on to this because you want to use the wax paper as kind of a protectant. Once you print on mm -hmm. this, the, the image on here, after you print on it, can be a little vulnerable. Uh, it's easy to wipe it so off or scratch that. it. So so when we're handling them or using them, we always kind of put this on top so we don't smear or, or smudge the image. You really enunciated I that. Did I? Smear. I wasn't sure if I wanted to say <laughs> smudge or smear. So, <laughs> was, so I said uh, both. I the, think it was good. I liked it. But that was good. I, got, I think I got my point across. Yeah, yeah you did. Safe to say. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want to talk about then the, yeah, the what did you call it? The preview sheet. Pre you were call calling it. this a preview sheet. Yeah, so you can see I have kind of a setup here, right? So one thing real quick is that, you know, Val and I learned this lesson a while ago. So, the, you know, it's just standard 8.5 by 11, you know, size paper. But you should fill the whole thing up when you're printing. So you can see, you know, I, th I threw a couple extra photos of my dog on this one. So, and, I mean, I used to do it. It's like, well, I'm, I only want to print one or two pictures. So I would just print one or two pictures on the, on the paper. I'd cut them off and then stick like a half a sheet into the printer and it, it just it, doesn't work. It was pretty problematic. Yeah, we, they, so. it, get, it gets jammed or you, it prints weird, kind of cockeyed and stuff. So really, um, the best thing to do is uh, always fill the, the whole sheet with an image. Or just know you probably can't very easily use the other part. Yeah, of what's the, left yeah. over, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's what this is. So this is uh, printed on there. But beforehand, I always print them on paper be, uh, for a couple of reasons, probably the main reason is I want to see what the image looks like. So, I, so what's confusing for people a lot of times if we uh, talk about the image for a second is, you know, I mean, we all look at photos and they're always in all these nice colors. And so that is misleading sometimes when we're looking at that. Uh, you know, we read, you know, as human beings, we read color really quite well and that gives us lots of information. But once you print it, it's going to turn in black and white and then sometimes uh, the image might not be as... Uh, have enough contrast uh, in order to see what's going on. So by printing it on paper first, you can sort of get an idea of what's going on. I mean, just as a quick example, I guess my son's not, I don't know if he's, he's probably not watching, but if he was, I'll talk oh, about, hey. I'll talk about his. I'll talk about his face and his hair real quick. But you can see, the, um, you know, his hair is 
almost the same color as a background, right? I mean, it, it, the same value as a background. So it gets lost a tiny bit, right, as hair sort of does. I mean, if you see the, yeah, the finished image, you can see where some of that's not quite there. There's, um, there's not a lot of contrast in his face. You know, his shirt's really nice and dark, but there's not enough really deep um, shadows, you know, in his face to help the face read a little bit better. Right. I mean, I know it's my kid, so when I look at it, I can tell. But... Well, that's just it. I mean, it doesn't have to be just the most perfect contrast no, picture no. because you're going to know most of the time, you're going to know the image, and it's still yeah. going to be, you know, readable to a point. But but there are some we've done that, that just, you know, are real washed out. So yeah, I always say, well, if so. it's a, yep. you know, if it's a picture with a lady in a white wedding dress and she's standing in front of a, a mountain of snow, I mean, it's not going to read very well. Yeah. You know, you still might pick up what's going on, but, but so it's the, the contrast is really more than the color is what you're kind of looking at. And then, and then Roy does a good job too. I mean, with the Photoshop, right? You just yeah. can bump <clears> up <throat> contrast to a point. He can sort of fix them. So that's also why he prints them just on regular paper to see if he needs to maybe try to bump up the contrast a little bit. Yep, a lot of times, especially with little kids or babies, you have to, I bump up the contrast in faces in particular. Um, but you know, a lot of times, you know, I just use the either the simple, you know, we have a PC here, so a lot of times I just use the Microsoft, I think it's called Photos is the program, and you can, you can go in there and actually adjust the contrast. Or if you have some photo editing software like Adobe Photoshop or those types of things, makes it a little easier, especially if you're trying to pinpoint where you want to adjust your contrast. But I, I almost always adjust the contrast on every image I'm doing. So uh, basically what you want is that what's ever dark in there, you, you want something that's as dark as you can get it, and you want some other area that's as light as you can get it. I mean, it really helps to have that big, wide range of values um, in the image. And again, printing it on paper first just kind of gives you an idea of what, what you might need to adjust. The other reason why we print it first is because the way that uh, the printer works, which we haven't talked about the printer yet, but the printer works best if it's warmed up a little bit. Um, it prints onto this film again, you know, the photo fusing paper is like a uh, plastic, so it prints onto it a little bit better if the printer is warmed up. And, and so sometimes I'll even do a couple of copies uh, just to get it kind of warmed up and ready to go. Uh, and then we, you know, of course, print onto here. Um, and I think Val's going to show other, later. Yeah, but one of the other reasons that we really like printing oh, that right. print, that yeah. um, test first, sheet. Yeah. I, I call it a test sheet, but okay, you call whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. Um, just on the plain paper. is because it is going to then be pretty much identical to what you actually print on the, on the actual photo paper. The actual photo paper image is, is a little bit fragile. I mean, you can't rub across it or, or handle it too roughly, else some of that will just completely smudge off. So in order to, to handle it as little as possible, I always like to cut the paper one and use it for the size. Then I use this to actually cut my white or cut my background for my picture. And so when I'm handling this and measuring and cutting, I'm not worried about smudging the ink on my real picture, yeah. right? So then once you get everything all cut, then you can just, you just sort of know how you cut this when you try to match the actual photo which is underneath here and then um, you know I just cut it pretty similar to the way I cut the first one do you want me to cut this now? yeah go ahead yeah. okay and um, so what I also was showing is that you know we haven't shown this yet but when this lifts off it's like a it's a decal and so when we float this in water this image will lift off of this backing and when it does that any place where it's really light or white, like her face, or you know any of the white in her coat or whatever. That's going to actually tr be transparent and pick up the color behind it, which is why we always kind of use a neutral color behind the picture because any color we use back here is going to show through. So, did I show this? Yeah, you might as well show that one. Just this that. was one. This was a striker when we got it, and I didn't realize. And I don't know. You can't hardly even see her in there. But I'm going to turn over the back, and that's what it looked like before I fired it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was going to be the color. I thought, oh, the image on that's going to be fine. You know, it's not. But then it, it struck to this color, and you can't even really see her oh, in there. That salmon pink. Yeah, pink, so right? we'll, we're going to show you the colors that we've used, the backing colors, just to, to let you know. I mean, often we've been using a white, but there's a few others that work. 
And then this one was a white that I used, an opaque white, but it, was, it wasn't very dense for some reason. So I don't know if you can tell that we sort of have a greenish tint to us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not totally green, but this is the back. See, this is what the, the picture on the white is sitting on that green. And that green wasn't completely opaque, and so it's kind of shifted some of that green tint. So you do have to be a little careful about the background that you use, um, just so you don't color something a weird color that yeah. you don't want to color. Yeah, I agree. So. Yeah, so I'm just cutting. I already cut the other sides of it, so I'm going to carefully go ahead and cut this off, and I thought I'd show you just because if you see here, down here, my test one, it's got a white border, but the white border's from the white piece of glass being bigger than the picture. If I want a white border, I still am going to cut everything off my picture because that's not going to give me a white border, even though it looks like a white border here. So just to know, anything that you could leave it behind, it won't matter, but it's just going to blend right in with whatever glass you put it on, right? So I'm going to cut that off. And then it's pretty similar to the one I use to cut my glass mm -hmm. and handle and manhandle, right? So then now I've got this one, which is the actual picture. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah, you might as well just go ahead and do okay. it. Okay, right? so water. Oh, can I jump in real, yes, real quick? Yes, jump because right in. The, I mean, I was noticing, I, like lots of things, Val and I do things slightly different, right? So it's kind of good to get a different perspective on it. But often uh, when I'm cutting out an image, uh, like Val was saying, so anything that's white out here is gonna, it's just uh, going to be clear, right? Or whatever the color of the base class is. So I don't even, when I'm cutting this with scissors, I don't even try to get super close. You don't I even actually, care. I yeah. leave a little bit, so I don't have to feel like I have to cut a perfect line because it already has a nice straight line, right? That's all you're going to see. So if you came in with scissors and just kind of cut like this into the, the, what, the white area, you're going to fuse it and you're not going to notice that. The, um, the decal paper burns off. It all burns off. So if, you, if it's a little big and kind of overlaps the glass even, that, that just all burns off. But... Um, that's all I want to say about home. Okay. trimming it. When you're trying to trim it, it's, you know, you don't have to be as, as picky as you might think. So, Okay, so I'm just going to say, and they usually always do this. They usually always curl up. So I may just kind of... Yeah, I hold them for a couple seconds is what like I normally open do. Open it yeah. like this and just kind of... Yeah, just give it a few seconds. I noticed that this, um, it seems like this current batch has been... Lifts off fast. Lifts off fast, yeah. right? Did you notice the same mm -hmm, thing? I noticed. Yeah, sometimes you have to let them soak for a while. I mean, even like 30 seconds or more sometimes. And sometimes but... they don't stay uncurled, but it's also staying uncurled better, this, yeah, but this, this batch. This one, yeah, it's so just... So my point is, you know, don't just put this in and then go eat dinner and then come back, because if the um, image floats off the paper, which it might... Um, sometimes it's hard to get it up and out of there without wrinkling the heck out of it. So, I mean, I've had people before where they were floating on the top of the surface and they grab it, and it's just a plastic film, and, it, and when it, it came together and stuck, and they couldn't get it flat again without totally So I can see it yeah, lifting see up it lifting? this one corner, so I'm just going to take it out because I'm pretty sure. But what I always do um, is, before I actually try to use it, I put both my thumbs on it, and then I just push up together, and I don't know if you could see how it, it just slid up. You so put it over top of the. So I know it's. There you go. Now we can see it. I know it's loose, right? Yep. That's so good idea. instead of taking it all the way off the backing, I I will do it this way. I don't know if you can get in here, but I will do the same thing. I'll push some up above, and then I will go ahead and let it adhere to the glass, and then I just slide this out, and that actually helps so that you don't get a corner flipped up. Or, you know, you don't have to go in and because if you get a corner that flips up, then it is kind of tricky. To, it's so thin, you know, it's yeah. so really thin. So um, and then just know that once it's on there, when it's still this wet, you know, I can move it. So I can slide it around. I don't have to worry about, you know, about yeah. centering it. I can still slide and center it right now. It wasn't so concerned about getting it perfectly centered because now I'm kind of just but when you do slide it I have both thumbs you know you're not going to put a finger here and then try to pull you you have to kind of support the whole thing as you center it which that looks pretty centered to me so you're not going to grab a ruler and nope and measure it nope just going to move it a little to the left a little this way I knew that she doesn't like she doesn't use rulers Okay, so then once it's down, you still could have a little bit of, um, 
you know, little pockets maybe of water underneath and stuff. And so we just gently, at least this is how I do it. This is how you do it. I'm, I'm not sure if we do it the same way, but I guess I'm going to find out. I will just kind of gently come in and just kind of start in the middle and just really lightly because wow. you can see, you see, you can, well, sometimes I like to get that extra water out. But you get a little bit of ink, but but really not much. And if you don't see any pockets, then don't worry about it. I can tell you that. So when we first got this product in, you know, the, the recommendations from the manufacturer, I think it's from the manufacturer, was using like an old um, plastic gift card as like a squeegee to try to squeegee the water out and stuff. And then I just found, and I'm sure Val felt the same way, I mean, it, you just can easily damage the image. You know, you get these scratches in there. So I do use paper towels, similar like what Val does, but <clears throat> I just pat it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I start in the middle patting it and then kind of pat to the edge and then, um, you know, it's kind of squeeze out any water that's there. And then often you have to go come back in and, and you know, you might have to slide it back in place again. Yep, and so then I just, and... I mean, whatever you want to put it on, right? So then once your picture's on your neutral color, then you can take this and put it on any color of glass yep. and do anything yep. you want with it. Um, you know, lately we've been doing them like these, you know, where you just, we just leave them on a flat piece of glass and then put them on a, on a stand, which has sort of been my favorite lately. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Um, this I, was, I didn't always do them this way either, but yeah, I Yeah, sort of this, like this one we did, I did a long, long time ago. She's um she's actually 17 now. <laughs> yes, that's so a couple, couple years ago. It was a couple years ago. And um but this one I did intentionally because it fit a, a slumping mold of this, you know, gentle little bowl mold, which, you know, is kind of nice, but you know, so if you wanted to do it, you know, in some kind of a mold and and put the picture in the bottom or whatever, I mean, you could do that and then turn it into, you know, a bowl or plate or something like yeah, that. I have but a bigger one. I, I forgot that I have one at home that I did for like my this. wife that had our kids pictures on it that's, you know, a big Big plate, probably. Mm -hmm. I noticed that it needs to be a gentle slump because <clears throat> I did one in a bowl, but it stretched the image when it slumped down. So that's that's a good point. Yeah, a good yeah. point because it can't be they too can dramatic of a of a drop, else yeah. you probably will have that issue. Oh yeah, let me, so that made me think of something too. So this is um, something else that we learned just through the process was if you'll notice that on the images and the way that Val did it, the image is always on top of the glass. So we're not capping them with clear. So we're not putting cla uh, clear over them which we, we've done that in the past. I mean, it, the image doesn't disappear, but what happens is sometimes the glass moves a bit and then so you can distort the image. I mean, we have, I have a picture, I think, of my son when he was like five that, that I, put, I put clear glass on top and then so he's got a big wrinkle like in his face, oh. right? So, um, or they we are. trapped, one, someone else, we trapped air bubbles and so the person's face has all these air bubbles on them. So it also again, makes them so shiny. That it gets real glary. Did you already oh, say yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Thanks. I wasn't really listening to him. <laughs> oh, okay, you looked wow, at me. That's a well, you looked at me like maybe you just got finished <clears throat> saying that, and I'm thinking, oh no, no, but that because I think they did suggest that in the beginning with this product that maybe it would be a good idea to put clear on the top. I think, I think they did. They did. Yeah. And um, I and photos but we yeah, yeah, yeah we didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I think by the time we got the memo, we'd already been doing it a little bit, and then once I started putting clear, there was like all all kinds of places in the room that I couldn't even see the picture because of the glare, you know, from the shiny clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, because this has a little bit of a, I mean, this more is, of a satin yeah, kind of Yeah, but it's right? shiny enough. I mean, the finishes are shiny enough. So anyway, yeah. that's kind of why we don't, right, use yeah. the clear. No. But, Too much but then, you can, then you just can embellish them like you can see. This one's got, you know, dichro around it. This one's a little dichro in the corners. I use sometimes our vitrograph that we use, you know, if you want to, yeah, show that. You can use that to decorate around. Yep. Um, you I use some dichro frit. Yeah, on, on this one, I use some dichro frit to kind of <laughs> enhance the crown and just threw a little in the, in the, so that's in the background just to add a little bling to it, right? So I'm trying to make yeah. it look all fancy. Let's circle really quick back to the printers because we kind of touched on it. <clears throat> yeah, we, yeah, so you'll notice that the image, I, this is part of that, that um, Either you like it, or I guess, or you don't like it, but this is the way it happens. So the image, um, you'll get this sepia tone, or some people say sepia, I guess, depends on where you grew up. And, um, <laughs> and I was going to say where you got your art education was the other thing I was going to say. But uh, So it's always this kind of you know um, brownish sort of rust color, uh, and that is because of the toner that we're using. So the, the key to this whole process is really having the right printer. I mean, that's, that's it. So um, in a simple term, it is a black only laser printer. So not an inkjet printer, but a laser printer. 
And then we wrote up on the board here, in fact, I got just before we went live about an hour or so ago, I, I got online to look what was available. Um, we've had the best luck with HP models, you know, Hewlett Packard um, model, the printers. And uh, they, you know, we're not, we don't get any, we don't sell them. Delphi doesn't sell them. They, Val and I, unfortunately, aren't getting any kind of kickback from HP. But um, but our, our personal experience is that they have the best, I mean, for getting a nice, good quality image, they seem to work the best. Um, they're one of the few companies that still have the proper toner cartridge. So, um, yeah, it, Kaylee showed you some, these are the um, current models that were, all of these were under 150 bucks. In fact, two of them were only like $90 on sale. I, yeah, I noticed so they're really not at a couple of places. So it's yeah, not a huge, really. huge investment, really. Um, but did you say that it's the iron oxide in I the toner? I did not say that. So, okay. so again, the, the real thing about the printer is the toner cartridge, right? So the toner cartridge needs to contain iron oxide, which is really rust, and that's why you get this yeah, sort yeah. of... So if you makes think about sense. what's going yeah, on, so when you look sense. at like the paper image and you see that... So this, the toner cartridge is like made up of some kind of plastic polymer that's black, right? And then um, iron oxide. And so when we fire this in the kiln, everything burns away except the iron oxide, right? So the, the plastic film that, that we're using to kind of carry the image, uh, that burns away. The plastic burns away. That's part of the toner. Um, but what's left is just the metal, right? The iron oxide, which won't burn up because it's, you know, it's a metal. And so um, if you're not sure uh, what, if you have a, access to a, a black only laser printer, and so it, it can be a color laser printer and you only use the black, that won't do it. It has to be a black only one. You can look up probably, you know, most manufacturers, you can find a spot on their website where they have the SDS sheets, which are the safety data sheets that tell you like what's in the toner cartridge. And you're, what you're looking for for one of the ingredients is iron oxide. And a lot of times they use the word ferrite, um, uh, which is the same thing as iron oxide, right? Uh, so if you see that, and usually it's somewhere above 40% of the product, and uh, I can tell you that you probably won't find one over 50%, but the higher the number, the better the image comes out, right? So I know the Hewlett Packards are around 50%, um, so which makes them uh, get a nice... Uh, pretty nice image. So we should touch on too. We should touch on the firing schedule. We we need to do yes. that because a lot of the times it's it's people will ask us exactly you know what's our firing schedule for the photo fusing paper or the yeah paper photo what <laughs> <laughs> well that paper this paper they ask for the firing schedule and you know we're happy we'll have we'll you know we can. You know, Kaylee can put it up or whatever. It's really just our full fuse. Yeah, we just firing do, use it whatever our full fuse. And is. so, really, the answer to that question is doesn't really have much to do with the fact that there's a photo fusing situation going on. It has more to do with the size of glass you're fusing on. Is kind of how yeah. we determine and, and what, you what want our, your glass to look like. What right? our firing schedules yeah. are. Yeah. But this will go to a full <clears throat> fuse. And so, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. But except for since we're talking about firing schedules, let me I'll just touch on that one more time. Is that so I did um, once, because uh, somebody asked me, well, how low of a temperature can I go? So I, ex I experimented. I just kept going lower and lower until I got to a temperature where the image wasn't fused to the surface and kind of wiped off. So it's somewhere in the 1350 range. I think I got a little lower than that, but not much lower than that. Um, and then, to be honest, I just didn't really care for the look of the, the fused glass when I was done. Uh, I kind of like these ones that, like I said, all everything you're seeing here on the table were full fuses. Yeah. Um, even though I know it's... It's a single layer here in the back, right? So it's not totally in some in some in some areas. It's not a total, you know, quarter inch, but right. like like Val set up here. Yeah, it's just <clears throat> two layers is the white. The, the blue is one layer, and then where the white is actually is equates into two. But yep. out here but it's out here just it's one. Not, yeah. This one was two layers. Yep, that one. Yeah, yeah I used to do them all that way. Yeah, um, we did used to do them, but but now we not but always. we kind of I kind of yeah. like them a little lighter and a little. Yeah. yeah, we kind of like the, you know, the color around here, right? It's nice, so I don't have to go in and cut little strips of clear or something to make it a quarter inch. You just, and then we, you know, Val and I both kind of like when the when the glass sometimes is a little more organic. We're using these rolled edges. You can see it, like on I think on my son's picture too, the same way. Like we're using the rolled edge of the glass to kind of just add a little interest. So, um, um, but then yeah, so we just fused it. We um, 
we're going to use this nice handy dandy um, hot shot kiln that we just recently got. So yeah, and I think I and I I wanted to take this opportunity oh, yeah. to clear up whatever maybe anybody thought I was saying last time when we were talking about them. I got a little feedback about the um, controller and the tap, and I you know I kind of blame Roy. Um, but we, we don't we can't watch these we just can't so I'm we're not real clear on exactly I know I was going to relay a story about how I didn't used to like the tap because when we got them in I wasn't using it correctly but the story was going to go on to say once I realized that where I was making my error it was it was a beautiful thing it was so I mean it's so user friendly so that's that's all I just I just wanted to clear that up because it's one thing if I didn't like something and people say you know yeah well, why didn't you like it? But when it's not really what I was saying, so. Yeah, no, I know you were. I, I heard you saying. I think I maybe it was one of those things that perhaps was a little close. So um, <clears throat> if you didn't see that, you know, we have a video, you know, we, that we talked about this at our last, you know, Facebook Live. So if you didn't get an opportunity to see that, you can go to our um, video page on <laughs> our, um, at Facebook or our YouTube. You can check out our YouTube channel. It's also there. But we, we talked a little bit more about this. We weren't going to talk about it a bunch today other than, again, it's you know a relatively new kiln for us. And, and so we're you know learning it and playing around with it and having some fun with it. Um, and, and we I, have one that has, I mean, what the beautiful, one of the neat things is the fact that you can actually put in what your firing schedule is oh, yeah. for. So when we were doing the photos the other day and we just picked it on the tap that said, Roy's photo views. So, you know, so that's nice that you can really give it a name, identify exactly what firing schedule you're using it for. And that's one of the things that made us think to bring it back in. And yeah, so, yeah. And also, the other thing is, too, is just the, how it's made, right? So it's a clamshell. I don't know if I can, yeah, see, I, mean, I can easily lift this from standing behind the kiln even. But what I know that if you can see the, um, how Val has her piece set, set up, I'm knocking stuff down. But I, I think Val and I are both similar in that we don't necessarily, I don't glue anything. I don't, you don't glue, right? Val and I, we don't glue things. So if you look at how this is, this piece here is a little just loose on there, right? So you can see where it can move around. What's, to me, I, I think what's really nice about the clamshells is I can pick up stuff and I don't even have to be all that super careful. I just have to put it in and then I can go back and look at it and go, oh, that shifted a little bit and I can just, it's easy to, to yeah, access to lift it. Up and, yeah. You know, that, that's one of the things I really like about yeah, these particular kilns. Yeah, make any adjustments. Is, or... Yeah, you can easily make adjustments for those of us that don't glue anything. So. Yeah. Um, but what I, oh, the other thing the we color, wanted to talk about yeah. was color. So one thing that's confusing again for people is like if you see these photos, anything that's white is going to be the color of the glass underneath it. So that's why Val was mentioning earlier that we often work on white, right? But these are some other colors that we've used a bunch. I, I sometimes have uh, like using some of these more uh, glasses that have a slight softer yellow, a uh, yellow tone to mm -hmm. them, because a little warmer tone, because you know the the you know the image is already sort of a warm sepia tone. So, uh, but I've used this uh, this pale gray. We ha there's a glass that we couldn't that we're out of stock of at the moment, so I couldn't grab a, a piece of it. But but here's a small piece of it that I is. Think, we think uh, this yeah, is yeah, is this one? Mm -hmm. It's called um, light peach cream. Is the um, what the manufacturer calls this one? Is bullseye? In case you're wondering. But it's a nice soft. Yeah, look. it's a real nice soft color and not so harsh. Sometimes the white, especially for people's faces, is a little harsh, you know. Uh, but we did want to talk about the different uh, the different whites, whites right? There's a lot of them. Yeah. Oh. I can go grab that piece of it. You want, you want me to, to talk about I can get it. So you want to go grab it? Oh, I Val's going to go grab one. I did one yesterday, so um, I know that you know, when Val and I are up here, it looks like we're pretty late. We're, we know what in the heck we're doing. Um, we don't always know what we're doing. And sometimes, you know, some of the samples we make are like the day before. So I made something yesterday. I was like, oh, I wanted to um, sh show something. And I, um, so I put something in the kiln last night. We were out of the white that I normally like to use. So I'm like, oh, well, Bullseye has lots of whites. So I grabbed a different white. And um, and you and you're gonna see here in a second what the image looks like. So I can tell you that sometimes the glass you're using can affect the image. So the image is affected by mainly like if you don't have the right toner, that's gonna affect it. Or I know around here, if your toner is starting to get older, right? So if you've used it a lot while printing, the the quality of the print might look good on paper, but on the photo fusing, and once you fuse it, it might look lighter in color than it does. But yeah, look at these. So this is one of my dog, right? So you can see what the image really, this is what the, um, you know, it's what it's supposed to look like is more like this, right? But but brown. And then this is the one of, um, 
of my daughter Emma, right? So compared to the when you compare it to the, the this photo, and it, the only difference is the white that I chose. So this white here is something that Bullseye calls dense white, and uh, it just for whatever reason. So again. The image is made up of a metal, iron oxide, and so the iron is just reacting with some other metal that's in this glass, and it doesn't quite like it. Um, and so you're never going to get a really nice, strong image. Uh, we, are, um, Val and I have found with Bullseye that our favorite white is something called opaque white, which, again, is one that we seem to be out of today, but we have a small piece of it. And then this is Bullseye's uh, white opal, they call it. Oh, dear. And so can you see the difference between them, right? The density of them. You see how this one is, like, if you can maybe even see some of my, it's a little translucent. Now, it does get a little more opaque when you fire it, but it doesn't get as, as opaque now, as I'm this one sure does. I'm pretty sure that it so. was the, I used it yeah, here. Yeah, so we think this is what Val, yeah, Val thinks she used this one. So you can see that, as, as she mentioned before, that green glass, the color coming through. So um, the opaque And it's white a little confusing, you know, because they both good. have, you know, the one with the word opaque. <clears throat> is the one that you want, not yeah, the opal. Not opal and not dense, right? Which I think I just well, said dense a second ago that was good, but no, it's not. Opaque well, white is the one. Shoot us an email if you if we've confused you. Really, you and we'll we'll, really we'll clarify. Yeah, and ask for Kaylee. That's right. Um, That's so right. and then but otherwise we showed you some of these others. And then I know there's probably some ninety six people out there if you're fusers. I've I've done a lot of the playing around with the photos in particular on ninety six and um, they don't have as many whites to choose from. They have one, they're white, they just call opal white, and then the other one they call crystal opal, which is kind of a, more like a translucent white. So again, use the more dense white. Um, and uh, they do have some warm colors too, some of these kind of like ivory or cream colors. And I think one of them, I think it was ivory if I'm not mistaken, I had a similar issue like I did with the dense white where the image just didn't, for whatever reason, whatever the, you know, the, again, the composition of that glass interferes with the image, you know, staying on the glass, so. Good. Um, but I think that's about that thinking it. about covered about it. about firing mm -hmm. schedules. We covered all the other stuff. So, yep. but as always, again, if you have questions, you know, reach out to us. Or, what's better yet, if you have ideas for other things you'd like to see us do, I mean, we're happy to um, join you guys every couple of weeks and talk about stuff right. we we think you might want to know. Yeah, about, no, we so. really would appreciate. Yeah, to be honest, you yeah. know, most of these things that we're doing are a suggestion from somebody somewhere. So, or they're either you know a customer in the building, or somebody has emailed us something, or something that the uh, people uh, that uh, you know monitor our our Facebook and those kind of places, <laughs> um, or our website um, from questions coming from there. So, again, if you have things you'd like to see us do in the future, yep, let us feel know. Free to let us know. But otherwise, thanks for joining us today. Yep, we'll see you in we'll a couple see you weeks. In a couple weeks, we think. Yeah. So, thanks.